So uh, in this video we're going to be going over how to properly camera track uh, anamorphic footage. Uh, I have a couple of examples for you here in the uh, preview as you can see. So when you import um, anamorphic footage to uh, DaVinci Resolve for the first time, you can see it has these black bars. So if you go ahead and track it now, uh, it might look like everything is peachy, but you'll soon realize that everything is floating and not how it's supposed to be. So what you want to do is you want to track it on the footage that is de-squeezed like this. There is a more accurate way to do this. To just get started, let's just drag in a fusion composition, drag the uh, clip to fit the timing of the original one. And now if we go into the fusion page on the empty composition, if we now drag the footage into fusion like so, you'll see that right off the bat, it is imported how it was shot in camera. If you happen to be working in Fusion Studio, uh, the process is a little bit easier. So the same as in DaVinci, it loads by default with a pixel aspect from file. If you go into the loader and into import, you can see it says, uh, it says that here. And if you choose the default, you can see it resets to a pixel value of 1, 1. Same if you go to the custom. This is also a very neat way to discover the correct squeeze factor, say if you're working with stock footage that you didn't shoot yourself. Um, so in this case, you can try 1.5, which is a pretty normal one. And then if you just switch between from file, full screen that, to custom, you can see ah, it's not a match, and just pin down. So and then you just pin it from there. So I know this one is 1.333. So if I just go to from file, to custom again, you can see the uh, results are identical. Uh, but when you want to do the tracking, you want to set the pixel aspect ratio to one by one. What does that even mean, you might ask? Well, that means that the pixels are essentially a perfect square. So in Fusion, by default, when you zoom all the way in, uh, we have something called smooth resizing enabled. If you uncheck this, you can see now you have the pixels. So here you can see a pixel is a perfect square. Pixels are perfect squares all the time. <laughs> when it comes to anamorphic footage, you'll find that the pixels are square when the footage is squeezed. So it's kind of flipped and it is like this because it was shot like this because the lens squeezes the image so that it can be stretched and essentially be converted into what we call a uh, wide shot or wide screen. So when you are essentially de-squeezing your footage to make the proportions look correctly, you're actually stretching the pixels. You can now see if you zoom in all the way on a pixel, the pixel is no longer a perfect square. You see that? So whenever you are in an image that is de-squeezed, any track is wrong. And that is because a camera tracker by default assumes that your image has square pixels. Does that make any sense? It makes to me. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, add in a camera tracker. We can preview auto track locations. We can view the tracker node. Let's increase the density of the points a little bit to something like that. Uh, we can also lower the gutter size to have more points closer to the edge of the frame. And then let's just go ahead and auto track. There we go. Um, in the camera tab, I've had equally good results by just leaving it as is and actually choosing anamorphic. So for this example, we're just going to leave it because in the solve tab, we're going to have this option enabled. It comes enabled by default, so just leave that on refined focal length, so it will try to interpret by the track. And then we need to enable lens parameters. Uh, shout out to uh, Statics VFX for this one. So with that done, uh, actually, you know what? Um, we can actually go ahead and pre-select some of the tracks we think are gonna slip. So we can just go ahead and slide this to, we get a maybe 200 points out of a thousand, yeah. Then just delete those tracks immediately. Oh, and we also still have preview auto locations, uh, so let's just uncheck that. But yeah, with that done, hit solve. Okay, uh, that solve took uh, 10 seconds. I can see that the average solve error is 0 0.5. So yeah, that could be approved upon. Let's just lower the maximum solve error threshold here to just filter out some of the bad solving tracks, 33 tracks. Let's delete that, and then we can resolve. Oh, sometimes you'll find uh, 
that removing tracks will actually increase the average solve error. So uh, when that happens, uh, you can either retrack or just delete a few more, try again, see what happens. Average solve error of 0.35. So let me just look through the clip real quick. Yeah, I mean, that looks okay. Now, if you come into the export, just like last time, uh, go into the unaligned settings. We can choose a suitable location for the origin of the scene, something like that. We can choose our ground plane by taking this line in the front and this line in the back, and then essentially set the ground orientation from that. And then when you're done, click aligned, and then we can export the scene. Okay, so now we have the uh, tracked scene here in 3D and it looks like it's sticking pretty good. So that's nice. However, you can see that the grading is uh, has a curve on it and the grid from the ground plane is straight and it's not matching up with the lines on the, um, the horizontal lines of the floor. So what we need to do to fix that is essentially go into the camera tracker here in the solve tab, take a look at the lens division model. You can see it's 0 0.09. So if we go ahead and add in a lens distort node, view it, and then change the mode to distort, and then set the distortion to the value of the tracker. Now you can see um, it distorted the entire image. So just to merge this properly, let's just quickly just move that over there. Um, create a merge node like so. So that would be a single merge with the original footage. Uh, now, before that merge, we need to add in a resize node, pipe that in, and then we can change the pixel aspect to 1.35, which is essentially the de-squeezed result. So now if we pipe the lens distortion on top of the footage, you can see we are still not where we want to be. So remove the uh, footage into the camera, like so. If I make the ground plane bright white it might be easier to see actually and then what we need to do is we need to go into the render 3d that came with the camera tracker go into the image and then in the pixel aspect choose that set that to be 1.35 as well nothing happened and that is because for some reason resolve has this auto resolution button checked um, so we need to uncheck that and then we type in 1.35 there you go uh, and you can see that the um, the grid is being cropped outside of the edge just a little bit. And that is only due to the lens distortion. So if we turn that off and on, you can see that uh, that's the cause of it. Uh, however, you notice that the ground plane lines are matching better with the, uh, the lines in the image when we have the distortion on. So we need to, we want to keep that. So shout out to Statics VFX yet again. Uh, a quick fix for it is essentially to just remember to check this button here, auto crop data window, and then increase domain overscan just a little bit. So there you go. Now you have a perfectly tracked uh, 3D scene on top of your anamorphic footage. So if we just make the re point cloud renderable, you can see it's sticking quite nicely. And um, now you can add whatever you want into the merge 3D. So so yeah, that's how the camera track anamorphic footage. Now you don't have to freak out anymore if your tracks don't stick like they should. But yeah, that's it for this one. See you next time.